Hi everyone and welcome to another pick a card reading with a really special subject inspired by Venus's transit in the sign of Pisces, an energy that is influencing us as we speak and one of her expressions is definitely romance. Everything that has to do with love, dreams, even platonic love, even just love in general, unconditional love. You just go out on the street and you see trees and uh, hear the song of the birds. You look up at the clouds and that already, you know, transfers you into a vibration of love. But another meaning is fated love, karmic love, when two people, even before they're born, are already agreed to meet each other in this life. And that is exactly the subject of this pick a card, which is also a timeless one, so it's not linked to any specific frame of time. So today we are taking a look at who is your fated lover. Also, I would like to mention that this pick a card is dedicated for those people who are single and looking and are also on a spiritual path. Because if you're not on a magical journey or spiritual path or spiritual awakening, this won't make as much sense to you for the simple fact that why should you choose a fated lover for yourself when you are so compatible with many different people? So what I'm trying to say here is not everyone has a fated lover. Some souls simply choose to go with the flow because they're sure that they're going to find a valid partner just as it happens in nature. So basically this pick a card is going to resonate much more for those people who are actually in tune with the spirit world and they know that someone is destined to show up in their lives because that will make this union complete. You know, some call it twin flame, soulmate, it doesn't really matter how you call it. You know, you get the picture, it's a fated love. And also, this reading tries to look at their personality, who they are, not necessarily when you're gonna meet them or any other details. It is just to give you a picture of who they might be, and you know, it can be really helpful because maybe you already feel them, maybe you already have a picture in your mind or intuitively or you saw them in your dream. So, you know, this can also confirm that you really are feeling a genuine connection with someone out there and that makes it that much easier to trust and have faith that you are going to meet and be united whenever the divine timing is right, of course. So let us begin. For those of you who have chosen the first pile, your cards are, well, I used an oracle deck, so the names are a little bit different. Wisdom, but it's really the hermit in classic tarot. Followed by the eight of air, so eight of swords, and four of fire, four of wands. Now, first of all, you know, this is where we have to ignore gender, because you know your sexuality, you know how to translate all of this in such a way that it fits your situation. So when I speak about feminine and masculine, they're just energies and it doesn't really reflect the gender. Every living person, every human being has both masculine and feminine energies inside them and their balance is just a detail, a uniqueness. So basically, for those of you who have chosen the first pile, this person has a lot of masculine energy and it, they have a lot of past karma. So they came into this world with a massive karmic baggage, especially a spiritual one, because it might be the case that in their previous existences, they were a very important figure in the spiritual world but not necessarily in the most positive sense. They had a lot of dark wisdom. They used their power, their knowledge, of course, everything that they studied and all everything that they inherited from their past lives to, you know, live up to their principles, do what they think it's best they must do. 
but sometimes neither their principles, neither their worldview was actually harmonious. So they might have dealt with the darker side of things in their previous existence. So, you know, when they were born in this life, without a doubt, naturally, immediately, so to speak, they became interested in psychology, in knowledge, even science, like empirical science. But they also knew that there was a bigger picture, a totally different side of things. So they might be someone very familiar with the occult literature and all of that spiritual world. But in their younger years, I think that because of that karmic pattern, they were really into the darker side of things and they studied it. Maybe they tried it out. But of course, very quickly, they realized that in this life, they have to do something totally different with their spiritual powers and their gift. They have to align to their souls and their souls are not dark. Neither were they, you know, very light. They were more like neutral in the middle path. And in this lifetime, they have to choose their destinies. They have to choose a path, really. And they have already chosen to align with love and healing and the light because their creative energies are very, very strong. So basically, that is who they are. So all until this present moment, they had to really work hard karmically to learn the lesson of responsibility, to know just what the power of magic, the power of the mind, manifestation, thoughts and all of that, just how much power they truly have over everything in life. So they need to be careful how they use it. And also if they use it, for really good purposes, it just makes them whole as a being, it feeds them, it makes them stronger, it makes them irradiate, it makes them basically feel so very in tune with the oneness of all things. But this also had a different lesson to it, that if that done excessively, you know, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So they also had to learn to respect everyone's free will if someone doesn't want help. If someone, for example, wants to be lost and suffer and whatever, well, then that is their choice and there is nothing to do anymore. But of course, I do believe that they have learned all of this until now and many times in the most painful ways possible, that seven of uh, air, well, that is means that they had to learn that every single action has a reaction, even thoughts, even words, even anger, even angry intent. And at the same time, self-sacrificial tendencies, if exaggerated, will always lead to a dark road. And because it's reversed, it's really, really good because they are balanced now. They are in full knowledge. They are totally okay. They closed their past karma. So... Basically, they are totally free and are doing their own thing. But, you know, the wisdom, the hermit, basically, is also reversed, which means that they are really, really solitary people. They learn that they have to observe and adapt the position of the observer, the outsider. So they don't allow a lot of people in their lives they don't have a lot of friends on purpose. And even though, you know, you, they always knew that they are not destined to be hermits for the rest of their lives. The same way that you kind of intuitively sense that someone is out, out there for you. They have done the same thing. But they never took it very seriously until this moment. Because their independence, their spiritual journeys, their devotion to the divine was much more important to them. And they were also a little bit emotionally immature because they thought if they have a partner in their lives, that is almost like betraying the divine. They thought until this moment that the only partner one can have in life is the divine spirit or any form it takes, call it as you will whatever that means for them personally. But since it's reversed, 
that means that they are already open to the fact that they cannot do this alone, neither should they. So they're actually wanting to be found. And you know that um, four of fire, four of wands basically, means that they're already signaling, as in they're getting out of hermit mode, maybe they're on social media, or maybe they are doing small gestures, opening doors for their fated lover to find them, but you know, this four of uh, sword, uh, sorry, fire is reversed. So that means that they're not actually going out of their ways to do it. They're not investing all their strength into it. They're very much shy. Well, first of all, because they know that that person out there has to be spiritual, has to love and be united with the universe as much as them. But that also means that that person can see through them as in you, as in their destined lover, and that you will see the darkness as well and the history. So they're a little bit shy, they don't want to be judged, but they kind of trust that you will accept them as they are, and perhaps maybe you have the same history. So maybe your own journey, your own life story, your own karma is actually the same, and maybe it's even possible that you were... (laughs) co-players in the darker path in the previous existence. So maybe you were like a Bonnie and Clyde kind of soulmates in past lives. And now when fate had to separate you to heal and to find out what it is that your soul desires. And if that would be the darker path, that would be absolutely no problem because it is your choice. But since both of you align to this, now it is time for you to meet each other once again. So there can be no judgment. And now a little bit about them, in a, from a non-spiritual perspective, let's say. Um, they're very intelligent, and if they have a career like a normal down-to-earth job or career, it is something intellectual, it is something analytical, maybe communication, maybe IT. It can also be writing, it can also be something on social media. And even though it has something to do with their spiritual path and their, you know, journeys, it is concealed, it is hidden. It is a means through which they act, but it's not obvious. Like, let me just give you a ridiculous example. If someone has like a crystal shop, well, they're still a shop owner or a person who works in that shop. And you won't know what their spiritual path is. You just know that they work there. So, you know, it's concealed. It has to do with it, but not in an obvious, direct manner. Or another ridiculous example. I said the internet. Let's say that they're like a journalist or a blogger who writes or collects about spiritual articles, but maybe in a very down-to-earth way as plant medicine, um alternative therapies, maybe they're they're a psychologist or a counselor or a coach or whatever, but that still doesn't mean that they dish up their own spiritual principles and perspective, because obviously they have to be versatile. They will have to use different techniques and appeal to different clientele. So, you know, they cannot actually show who they are, but they do show that they have something to do with this field. And also a little bit about their physical appearance. Well, you know, Hermit has much to do with the sign of Virgo. And the sign of Virgo means a very natural look. So if we are talking about the female, that means not too much makeup. That means no artificial stuff, no artificial nails. She doesn't want to draw the attention. But of course, that doesn't mean that she doesn't have style. She uses nature, elements of nature, to make herself beautiful. So that means that she might wear floral prints or have flowers in her hair. And her hair is very natural, maybe long. Or if she's past the age of 35, maybe she also has gray hairs and she doesn't dye it. Or if she dyes her hair, it's a very natural, normal color, something which does exist in nature. 
Of course, they are much, much younger than they look. It might only be that gray hair that betrays them because their personality is very vibrant, very young, and they kind of try in their everyday lives to hide their ancient souls because if they would show it, it would make them like people very hard to understand. Like, you know, each and every word that leaves your mouth doesn't have to contain the wisdom of ancient civilizations. So, you know, when you meet them, you won't instantly know how truly deep they can get. You will, you cannot tell the miracle that they hold within them, but without a doubt, you will be able to tell that they're very smart. They can see through you. They know psychology, even if they don't have, you know, papers, degrees and studies, they're really, really sharp. And this, uh, you know, four of uh, fire reversed also means that they do enjoy the company of the inner child. So they're very humorous, they're very lighthearted, and they really tend not to take things seriously. And again, this points to the fact that they're an ancient soul, because an ancient soul just knows that everything is an illusion. So why take it that seriously? But once you get into a deep conversation with them, you'll be blown away. But the thing is, since this is your soulmate, so to speak, both of you are going to bombard each other and be blown away. So I think the moment when you meet each other, the shock is going to be so intense that you'll be speechless for a couple of hours. And another thing which I can also see in this is that you also have a difference Either them or you, one of the two, hasn't really traveled the world at all. And the other one has a lot. So one will teach the other one the sacredness of moving just with your imagination, as in projecting yourself. You don't have to move your physical body to Hawaii, let's say. You can simply project yourself and experience that vibes the you know, magic of projection. And the other one will teach that sometimes it's so fun to be physically there and just physically experience the magic of travel. So this is this will be something that will complete and harmonize this divine union. And it, it is going to be one of your, let's say, hobbies for the rest of your lives. And the last thing that I see is that neither you or your soulmate, your destined lover, so to speak, are very confident in yourself, sexually speaking. And even though you might give the totally opposite impression to anyone that, oh, you're very good, you're very passionate, you can burn people up just by looking at them. But in your heart of hearts, neither of you are confident. And maybe both of you are wounded one way or another. And that is another thing that you're going to have in common, that you will just discover what it means to be free and burn like the sun. And another thing I would like to mention, I think that you're also a very private person. Maybe that was not how you were in the past. Maybe you were quite a very social person until you got burned by having a lot of social connections in your life. And now you're more careful about who you allow in your life and you don't really like to be everyone's friend and stuff like that. So there is a kind of fear in both of you that you wouldn't really like to have in your life a soulmate who is very social. And this is another thing that you'll have in common and you'll be so very happy because even in the first signs, you'll know that that person is a hermit type So what a blessing that is, because it means no one else is going to be involved in your relationship. You don't have to share each other with absolutely anyone, not as friends, not as anything. And even the, you know, soulmate, good friends, best friends that you have already in your lives. Well, those are two, three maximum and they're theirs to stay forever. So that is basically not an impediment whatsoever. So it is going to be such a blessing when 
your situations will just complete each other. For those of you who have chosen the second pile, your cards are the Justice, Four of Cups, and the Hermit. Now, this person is what you call an extreme idealist. And I think this person was much more idealistic in their youth, in their past, when, you know, they took their ideals, their most sacred goals almost literally. So I do see that they have a lot of life experience in whatever it means to live up for your ideals. That can be they were activists, that can mean that they were involved in humanitarian projects, that means that they most probably have higher education to give them the chance to get involved in whatever it is that they are fighting for or standing up for. And one of those things is justice, equity, fairness. And that can take so many shapes and forms. That can be something like ethnical. Or that simply means let's live every day in such a manner that our actions make the world a much better place. So it can be any really positive and good intent. Just that, you know, that also attracted a lot of challenges in their lives. Because this material reality is not made to be perfect, not made to be fair. So we cannot be perfect in an imperfect world. Neither can our parents, neither can be our children. Nothing in existence can be perfect and you learn this the hard way and this is for an idealistic person someone who lives for principles this is one of the most bitter and painful lessons in life and usually it comes as failure having to live with injustice and learning when not to rebel learning when you just have to surrender so this person had an, a lot of ups and downs in life they had, of course, moments of glory when they were triumphant. Their principle was supported by the most divine forces. But they also had very big downs when basically the universe abandoned them for the reason that we live an imperf in an imperfect world. And sometimes evolution is born out of chaos. So bad things have to happen in order for us to move forward or to get us out of the comfort zone. And you sometimes you just cannot help it, no matter how much faith you have. If you truly have faith, sometimes you have to leave things in the hands of the universe. And this was one of the hardest lessons for this person. This is what truly shaped them. And also the reason why I'm telling you all of this why this is this is a message coming through is that this is how they learned to trust the divine the four of cups the contemplation where they await for the divine to show them the path and then they take action but because before when they were learning their karmic lessons they were kind of like they created the plan and the divine had no choice but to support them until enough was enough and now they're living the opposite of that where they trust the divine to show them the path and they follow it with perfect trust and it's working it's beneficial they enjoy it much more than their old way of life than their old selves but this also means that they're not as active they're not as passionate they're not as you know multitasking in life as they used to be, they learn to just chill out and focus on one thing at a time, take each day as it is and not make like big massive future plans, just live the present. So they're not as active as they used to be, but however, if the divine shows them something, it, if they do get a feeling, if they do get a dream or a sign, they will definitely take action in a very serious manner. And the reason why this is coming through is that you shouldn't doubt when the divine will show them the path to you, they will go running. So even though they're not as active as they used to be, don't worry because that is not a disadvantage. And also 
in the opposite sense, if you are the one who might stumble upon them by coincidence, by synchronicity, divine timing, if they would feel an attraction, if they would feel a harmony between the two of you, they would take action without a problem and they would be very interested in you straight away. But, you know, when you do meet them, expect a very chilled out person, a very detached person, someone who is no longer living the drama, no longer living the passion, the almost obsession, but has learned that the principle is just an inner structure and it has to stay like that. We don't have to go out of our ways to enact it or, you know, prove it all the time. Yet, those principles and, you know, that inner fire, the passion, the motivation, the joy of life, the joy of doing things and living life and working in the world still has to be enacted. And this is how you're going to meet each other. Because the way this person still lives their, you know, alignment with their principles is that either they communicate, as in they share knowledge, or they are a teacher type, they hold a course, or they are students of a course, they learn, they gather information. So maybe you're in the same study group, maybe you're in the same Facebook group, a common interest, which has to do with something really, really positive. The hermit, well, one of the meanings of the hermit is seeking the truth. So both of you are seeking some kind of truth, the deeper meaning of life, maybe a spiritual path, a spiritual uh, methodology, so to speak. It can be like yoga or anything, really. It, there is even religious. It can even be church. But the other thing is that you learn, but you also contribute. Not materially, I mean, but with your ideas, opinions, activities. Maybe you meet or you do something in common. Maybe nature. The hermit is Virgo and Virgo is nature, mother nature, the living earth. Maybe nature is one of your common subjects. Maybe visiting a place. Because when the hermit is in upright position, he also travels. He seeks. He uses his lantern to illuminate the path around him so he can go on target, so to speak. So both of you are doing activities and there will be one point where your paths are going to cross because of that activity or whatever it is that you have in common. It can be a hobby, a philosophy, nature, spirituality, but it ha also has to have an element where you share something from your own experience. So you share your so story or you project your opinion, how you see this. Or fate brings you together and you, both of you are students, learners at a course or any, even if it's just something online, even if it's free, even if it's just a blog somewhere. But it can also be that one of you is the teacher and the other one becomes the student, vice versa. Or another possibility is that you will require each other's services. So something which is an agreement like a contract, the justice card, that can also mean a partnership because of something practical you have to do together. So it can be a collaboration, it can be you need an advice or they need an advice. But it can also be like something totally down to earth where, you know, you need an electrician or anything like that. And maybe this person might not be the electrician, but maybe you ask on Facebook recommendations and someone who intervenes and recommends something that might start this connection. So it's still a kind of agreement, even if that person just leads you to the contract or agreement. Another meaning of this justice, which doesn't exclude any of the other, is that either you or this person might be divorced, but might also have something reminiscent from that divorce. Maybe they have to pay a childcare or whatever that is. 
but it can also be something purely emotional that it really give de- gave them a very bitter taste about relationships and partnerships and that is why they closed their doors to everyone else and they just trusted the divine to guide them to the one who's going to be their life partner for the rest of this life so they're not seeking socializing they're not seeking any relationship they're not open to anyone they want you as in someone who is destined and they're very very serious about that and as i said they have an agreement with the universe that they are not going to enter in any relationship with anyone unless a divine sign appears that this is the one so the universe is tasked to guide them in a very specific way so basically that means that they know exactly what they want and what has to strongly resonate when you when you meet that's why there is no room for errors really because once this person kind of catches on that you are the one they are going to act immediately so be you know ready for surprises be ready for very quick action from the behalf of this person regardless who is the initiator all they need is to catch on that you're the one and that's it they will act like you've always known each other that like you've been already together tens of years So one of the reasons why the universe would like me to send this message is don't have the fear of missing out because that is impossible. This person guards their heart very very well and you, the universe has the key and no one else can actually intervene in this story. So just because it might take some time just because you might be feeling well I'm not getting any younger and I'm so ready for this right now and it's still not happening don't be afraid of losing out no one else will take this person so basically all you need to do is just trust you will your path will definitely cross and also a little bit about them they might be a libra or an air sign but we also with very strong earth energies So they're not your typical air sign because they're very practical, they're very lucid. They might have even legal skills. They might have done business, so they have a really solid down-to-earth experience even with official manners, so they're very very practical. They are also really good problem solvers. So there are people who always like and actually love a creative challenge. And also, you know, speaking about creativity, either you or this person is an artist of some kind. So one of you might work in arts and be actually quite good, maybe an expert. But anyway, you know, it is a perfect match because if one of you is the artist, the other one is expert at communication and sharing your art so basically it is a like a really good collaboration as well or in a different expression let's say an artist needs a muse or imagine what two artists can do maybe if one is a classic artist like a painter and the other one is like a digital artist or if you combine two different kind of arts or even if this is this means um a fascination almost an obsession with music maybe music is one of the ways you feed your spirituality maybe music is so very important for both of you maybe you'll meet at a concert and a concert needs tickets so that has a legal and agreement side to it as well and also physically they might not be your average person their style clothing style or maybe hair might be a little bit extravagant they really like to express their individuality so the physical appearance is also going to be something striking and also you know they're very non-conformistic in so very many different ways and another meaning of this hermit virgo energy can also take the shape and form you know virgo is the digestive system so that they're vegetarian or 
they are really into something holistic or they can use you know the power of plants and herbs for escapism and that might also be something you are gonna have in common and finally the message here is you are looking for them they are also looking for you so there is action here just that the way this person is looking for you is through divine guidance so basically they are putting spiritual a action into all of this intent or trying to manifest you, etc. So they are using this looking, searching spiritually. For those of you who have chosen the third pile, the cards are the Ten of Wands, the Strength and the Empress. Now, you know, this one might be a little bit surreal even for me. I do hope that this is real and not just a fantasy of mine. Because this tells the story that your fated lover is someone extremely special. I don't know, this might be more valid for female listeners. Or maybe someone who is looking for the same sex relationship. But of course, it can be of course for everyone. As I said at the beginning, gender is not valid here. The reason I'm specifying all of this is because this person has a lot of masculine energy, has a lot of fire in them. So this person isn't just very, very strong spiritually, psychologically, but also physically. This is a lot of physical strength. So if it's a female, it's a very strong woman, N not necessarily like a bodybuilder or such. But she has a lot of energy and physical strength in her. It is definitely the warrior kind of archetype here. So this person can be a very strong, passionate Aries. It can also be a fiery Leo. But it can also be a Sagittarius. And not just because Sagittarius is a fire sign, but maybe this all of this fire, this strength, this passion is something to do with thinking. It may be in intellect, maybe the highest principles, philosophy, etc. But you know, all of this fire energy was definitely something not positive, pleasant, delightful when they were young, especially in their childhoods, in their past, because you know, they had an extremely tough life. They really got a lot of punches, hard punches from life when they were the most vulnerable, maybe when they were children, so they had to grow up really fast. They had to act like adults. They had a lot of responsibilities because this Ten of Wands means burden. Burden on your soul, burden, you know, of everyday life. All these problems, like practical problems in life, not allowing you to feel free in your life, in your body, in your everyday routines. So this means a lot of pressure. It can be pressure from the family. It can be social pre pressure. Or if, as I said at the beginning, if it's a same-sex kind of relationship, it can be the sheer pressure of being different and not knowing what to do. Maybe feeling religiously guilty. So, you know, this person had a really tough past. And they survived emotional states. They survived turmoils in life. Which maybe many of us would not survive it. Or even if we would, it would leave marks. So deep marks on us that we would be maybe in a psychiatric ward. So, you know, the past of this person... It doesn't matter if materially or emotionally or psychologically it was as tough as it gets. But you know what? Instead of this person breaking, they fought. They didn't believe in themselves. We cannot even say that they had the support of their own selves, of, of the ego, the sheer willpower. Because, you know, they kind of bowed their heads, they learned humility, they learned modesty, they learned how to appreciate, 
but their spirit. Now that was so very strong, almost as if it, it, this person like be a jinn, you know, like a fire spirit incarnate into a person. Their spirit was so strong that it, that it guided them through and it preserved their mental, psychological, emotional and spiritual integrity. So instead of all this worries, maturization, the punches from life, yes, it did break them, but it also made them so very strong, so very realistic and so very deeply spiritual. They truly learned faith. But they were always incomplete because they put all their faith in the universe, the divine, whatever that means for them personally, and never in themselves. And this is where humility comes into play. And only now, maybe in the year 2018, did the universe teach them in an equally rough manner that they must imperatively, one trillion percent, also believe in themselves. Because if the universe is alive inside of us, then that means the more you love and believe the divine, you also believe the divine inside of you. But with that happening, that taking place in their karmic path, in their lives, now they are an embodiment of strength, of passion of justice, of self-empowerment. So basically, they are living their, this life with dignity. They heal their wounds and they, they are like an alchemist who managed to turn all of that, you know, pressure of the Ten of Wands into sheer strength. And now they are ready to give all this fire energy because... That fire energy didn't go anywhere, it's still within them. But they learned that it's love, actually. That love keeps them alive, love fuels them. And now they're so ready to give all that love to you. So basically the way they're thinking it, seeing this, trying to make this happen is that they are somehow very sure that you are going to attract them into your life and basically they know that when they will meet you their fated lover of course because that is what they're talking we're talking about their fire will ignite so strongly that they will have no doubt that it's you and the thing is even though they're like so very fiery passionate no one can ignite their fires with great ease because they won't burn for anyone actually quite the opposite no one can actually spark up their fire other than themselves, you know, through their passion, through their faith, through their spirituality, through whatever they're doing in their lives. But other than that, like a per just a person, not really. That's why they really, really trust their gut feelings, their instinct. Basically, the butterflies in the stomach because they know... When that happens, then it's real. That is the love they're looking for. Mostly because they never had that happen to them in their lives ever, ever. So, you know, they know exactly what to expect. And since no one in this life did that to them, made them feel them this way, that's why they know they cannot go wrong with that. That's why they know their bodies, their guts, their psyche, their inner fire just knows who it is. And when you meet, you meet. They know without a doubt. And of course, because this is like a Leo or a, an Aries, you, will, you won't have to do much. They'll just pounce on you in the most favorable spiritual sense and propose and start sharing their love whether you like it or not. So basically, they are looking for this Empress. They're looking for Venus. They're looking... For someone who can make them feel madly in love and passionate 24-7. But the problem is, no one really knows how you're gonna meet. And this is maybe a little bit bad news for you. Because that means that you have to work with your inner Venus. As in, whatever makes you attractive. Whatever makes you worthy of that kind of love. 
you have to work on your spiritual power. But when I say here, it's it's like power. It is to do, to act, to enable magic, basically, because you are the magnet. You are the one who has to lure his energy or her energy into your life. So basically, the pressure is on you right now. You have to find a way to magnetize yourself, to make yourself be able to attract that energy into your sphere. And when you do that, your job is done. The pounce, the surprise, the instant proposal is going to be there. Now a little bit about them. Now, as I said, if this is a male, they are very masculine. They might have a lot of muscles and they're also very natural. So expect their body to have all the hairs that a human body does have naturally. And they're also very natural. So basically, imagine if this is a male, imagine like a Rastafarian, like someone who just loves to be natural, won't alter anything about themselves. And they, even though they that dress clean and decently, you know, they're not really interested in fashion and anything like that. So clothes and stuff like that is definitely not going to be a factor. And if this is a female, well, even though she is also natural, she does like to take care of herself a lot. So, you know, if it's a female, she has clothes. Of course, her clothes are just the expression of her personality, which means they are not, like, striking to the eye. They're not, like, 10 trillion colors all in one. But they are really high quality and they do bear a message. For example, color matches, anything like that, which denotes that she really gives a lot about her appearance. She's always clean. She might wear light makeup, but it is very immaculate. And actually, maybe makeup, but in a way, in an artistic way, is her passion. So not makeup as in you go out on the street and you look pretty but maybe makeup to create costumes or for television or for movies maybe 3d makeup stuff like in an artistic way and i repeat if this is a female or it can be tattoos but you know i also said that it's very natural so don't expect like 3d tattoos and you know, tattoos from head to bottom, but expect maybe symbols, something significant, like symbolic, suggestive, like a glyph or a rune or something like that. And another thing, their spiritual path is also very, how should I say, very raw, very, very suggestive. So it might be a shaman with a big attitude, not as an ego or narcissism, or he knows everything, but rather quite the opposite. If you have power, prove it. Live by example, this kind of attitude as a no BS, no philosophies which you cannot prove. This can also be something druidic. This can also be like something which has to do with Vikings and the Nordic culture. But this can also be someone who moved into the heart of nature, who adapted nature as their lifestyle. So maybe they have a farm or they're part of a farming community or just nature oriented. Or if we are talking about a female, maybe she's a shamaness like a healer who works with plants so of course she kind of picks plants and loves to spend time in nature and even loves to grow her own herbs and stuff like that so you know maybe who knows as i said earlier you have to manifest them in your life as in you have to be the magnet so maybe sometimes when you go out in nature just take a walk or if you have a pet walk your doggy or you know you go to a nature themed festival or market or whatever and maybe it is there where you your paths cross and of course all it takes is this person to see you and feel the butterflies and the rest 
is automatic. And also, another thing which I have to point out, if you're a female listener, maybe this is the father of your child. If you don't have a child and really wished, but just haven't found the right person, maybe this is also that person. Or maybe if you are the kind of woman who says, well, you know, I'm not meant to be a mother, a biological mother. I love children and I do my part to nurture the youth children. I do express my maternal instinct, but maybe I don't want a child of my own. Well, maybe you are going to be very wrong. And it is this person who awakens your maternal instincts and all of a sudden you will want a child. For those of you who have chosen the fourth pile, your cards are the Ten of Swords reversed, the Queen of Wands, and the Chariot. Now, your person has had a really tough past because they kind of embody the visionary, the genius, the Aquarian archetype. Now, this doesn't mean that they are an Aquarius, but they kind of play the role of the Aquarian energies. They are big thinkers, visionaries, innovators, people who are very future-oriented, people who like to think ahead, who kind of open the doors for other people regarding the future, the next, the new. And they are very, very talented at something. Now, this can be, for example, an art. Maybe they have an artistic skill, but this can also be like, the power of words and communication, like a writer or a teacher or an expert in a field of science or psychology or either way, it is very susceptible to higher education. So they're expert at something, something which studies the universe. But as I said, it can be absolutely anything. It can be philosophy It can be like rocket science, astronomy. It can be cosmology. It can be psychology, parapsychology, technology, internet, IT. It can simply be a poet or someone who somehow uses communication as a tool to do something like a mediator, like a lawyer. But it really doesn't matter how this manifested in their lives, what actually matters is that they're a genius. They have a great intellectual power and this also means mind over matter. But the problem is that they had a lot of failures in the past. They tried a lot of things. They were involved in maybe a lot of projects, a lot of areas in life where they wanted to work wanted to prove themselves, wanted to innovate, wanted to create something new. So this means a lot of projects, ideas, plans, and a lot of it was also done, as in started, but it didn't work out a very successful way, so to speak. And the reason for that is the Queen of Wands. This means that they were kind of oblivious to just how much power they have inside of them. You know, a genius is only very powerful but once they know that they're a genius. If they do not know this, if they're not aware of this, well, then they're just a smart cookie and buy. And if this was the case in their situations, the universe gave them the lesson over, over, over again in order to finally gaze in the mirror and see that they're not like others, that they, their thoughts, their thought patterns, their vision is out of the ordinary, which means that they are either psychopaths or geniuses, and they're definitely not psychopaths because they are very functional in every single way. But of course, that depressed them. That made them feel so very lost several times in their lives. Their whole lives with a big journey of self-discovery, of self-exploration, trying to express that great power that they had. You know, answering the question to themselves, 
are they a psychopath or are they a genius? Because it has to be one of the two. And of course, after a lot of ups and downs, a lot of trials, tribulations, fails, successes, life lessons, toxic people, etc., they finally opened their eyes and they're finally embodying the chariot. So they're on their path, they're doing it, they're living it, they're okay with themselves, they know exactly how powerful they are, they know that mind over matter is a given fact, and they're actually using it in the best way possible. Because the way they used to use it is attract all their fears into existence, so manifest everything that they didn't like. Until the light bulb moment, the eureka moment that, well, the positive can manifest the same way, their dreams can do the same thing as their fears. So right now they have a big purpose, a big project, a big plan, they're really focused on their path, on their journeys, not just spiritually, but also professionally, also constructively, and you know, they're trying to put their work out there in a world to be accessible to more than one person, as in, they try to either promovate themselves or just get out there and do it. And also, they're very immersed into this. And also, the good thing about this person, and probably this mirrors you as well, they are spiritual, and they are very, very into the power and manifestation of the divine, but in a rather modern way, opposed to classical. So that means even science is a part of this. That means, you know, like exploring things from the quantum perspective. That means that everything is an illusion and we can alter that illusion. That means perception creates reality. So, you know, it has a scientific side to it. So it's not just blind faith. It is very rational. It is logical. It makes sense. And even the non-linear parts have a logic of their own. And that is the part where he, they have to trust. That is the element of the faith and the spirit. But this also has a very different side effect. And that might be something which you have really in common. And it may be that very same thing which will connect you, unite you, where you get to know each other. You know, a visionary, a genius who is also very rational, logical, who is also spiritual, well, it means that they have a fascination to extraterrestrials, aliens, um, other dimension, other beings, other entities. So maybe, for example, if you are able to channel, if that is one of your, your spiritual gifts, as in not theirs, maybe they will seek you out to help them channel, um, alien entity. It can also be vice versa, where you are the fascinated person who wants to hear the message of, I don't know what kind of um, extraterrestrial consciousness, let's say, or maybe you're into regression, into hypnosis, into all of these things. So you don't have to be each other's clients in that sense. Maybe you just access the same blog, topic, book, author, someone, a third party's uh, YouTube video channel about this subject in the comments or, you know, anything which has to do with visionary way of perceiving the future. And that Queen of Wands also represents that you also want to work with this. You don't take it just like a hobby. You actually think that this is very important to be studied, researched, worked with, because this definitely will take place or is an inevitable, almost imminent part of the future. So this is very, very serious for you. It's not like a fantasy. It's not like just watching Star Trek and going to a conference. You take this very seriously. It interests you. And now a little bit about them. Well, if they're a male, they're not your average male. They might be very slender. They might be a little bit feminine. So they're not that very, very masculine. 
but their smart and their words and the way they speak eloquently and they just use the magic of words, they will charm you in a second. <laughs> Now, if it's a female, they are someone who truly voices their opinions, is not ashamed of it. They're very communicative and, and they kind of like the color red. So they, they dress in red or their clothing has pieces of red profile picture or anything which has to do with red. They are also very stylish and maybe their hair, the way they arrange their hair is will appeal to you very, very much because it will be really unique, really beautiful. And they love horses. I'm not sure why this matters, but they love horses. And also, if she's a female, she is quite feminine, but in a very empowered way. She is like a proud woman. And she has a very, very um, soothing, but also vibrant voice, especially when she laughs. She just radiates. And last but not least, well, both of you are kind of waiting to attract each other in that chariot, so you can take the, the rest of this journey together, because maybe you guys look at this earthly existence and life as Earth being just a huge spaceship where you just travel together in space. So it is like an adventure as well. For those of you who have chosen the fifth pile, your cards are the Ace of Wands, the Two of Cups, and the Two of Wands. Now the very first thing that I have to say is the Eight of Wands clearly means foreigner, So, this person does not belong to your culture. That doesn't mean you don't have to live in the same country, same town, same street. But their ethnic origin or their culture is somewhat different. Of course, it can also mean that they live in a far away, in another part of the world. It can also mean that they traveled from another part of the world to where you live. And it can also mean that perhaps for one brief short moment in your life, you already met them. Not sure exactly how, but what is sure that none, neither of you knew that who you are or what it's going to be, that it's fated, etc. But you might have had a very small glimpse, a moment in your life when your past crossed but neither of you had any idea, so don't even try to access your memories, because it was very short. There is no way you can recall it or remember it, doesn't matter how much you try. Another very important element is this Two of Cups. Well, you kind of are, if a twin flame exists, if that is something which is truly the way they say it is, then this is the case. You travel each other with each other everywhere, in every life, any timeline, any existence. So basically, it's almost like you're actually one soul who does two different things at the same time. And this is also the meaning of this two of ones. You had to do something very particular for your karmic journey. And this other person had to do another thing. And this was basically your way of completing it simultaneously as a multitasking karma, if that is even possible, so that after both of your missions are done, you meet, unite, and party for the rest of your lives, because ultimately that is the Two of Cups. That is where life, karma, everything else in the world stops existing, And life from there on forward is only your love story. Everything is about you guys. Everything will be about your love. Everything will be just a projection of each other's admiration. So this will be heavily romantic. But this also means that in the past, neither of you actually had the chance to live out your romantic tendencies. Because the thing is, 
It's not like you didn't have people in your lives, but it was almost meaningless as pure romantically. The feeling wasn't there. The magic wasn't there. The the heart was there, but not the kind of love that you know that it's love. It was more like tolerance or or let's just love another human being as a human being. But something was very, very missing always all your life. And it's not like you had bad people in your lives or whatever. It just, it couldn't work. But this was a very heavy feeling. This was, this was really, really always bothering you because it was almost like an expectation you couldn't meet ever somewhere deep inside your soul You know what love means. You know exactly what you have to feel. You know the strong attraction, the magic, where just being in that person's presence makes you feel complete safe. So very safe that even if a comet appears on the sky, you won't care at all. Nothing will matter when you're together. And that is the feeling that your soul knows it's familiar with. And it's looking for. But that is why it's also bothering you. Because you don't even know if that is something real. Or you're a little bit high standard from an emotional perspective. In other words, is that kind of love just in fantasy books? In our imagination? Or is it actually real? And perhaps this is one of your biggest insecurities, even as we speak, one which you could never overcome, that you can really, really like someone and appreciate someone and the feelings are honest and real, but unless you feel that what love means in your soul, in your memory, so to speak, from a previous existence, you cannot be with that person. So that's why sometimes you feel so very guilty Because you love a lot of people. You like so very many things about a lot of people. But you can't be with them. And this is something inexplainable. And every time you have to explain it to someone. Well, it just sounds crazy. And also, there were moments in your life. And also, your partner is like a mirror image. So did the same thing. When you tried to just be with someone who you loved as a human... Or maybe there was also some kind of attraction, but it just couldn't work out and you tortured yourself and you felt so guilty and it consumed you and, you know, it it left a trauma, which you did for yourself. And also this eight of, uh, sorry, wands, this eight of wands represents your faith, your spiritual path. And that was very important in your life. You worked for it, you studied, you read, you were into so many things and you've done a lot of, you know, really, really good things with your spirituality, for yourself, for other people, your philosophies, your advices, your gifts. Because, you know, this eight of wands also means that you are connect, you're a channeler of some sorts. So your intuition is spot on always and you help people even if not if not officially even if it's just your friends or best f- people tend to just trust you and be attracted to your advice and th- where i'm going with this is that like you are definitely someone who is extremely fortunate and saw the let's say the power of the universe you saw a lot of good things accomplished through spiritual means so basically, you have no doubt in your, in your heart, in your soul, in your mind. Yet, at the same time, you don't feel authentic. You feel that something is missing. You feel incomplete. You feel like you still haven't experienced what you need to make you feel in a certain way, as in enlightened at least a little bit or be a valuable part of the spiritual world or basically the spirit being permanently present in your life. And the reason for this is simple. Half of you is missing. Half of you is 
somewhere in the world experiencing, feeling the same thing. But now imagine when these two halves meet. You saw a lot of things. You have a lot of experience. You Maybe you saw miracles. And this other person did as well. And when these two positive polarities meet and this union takes place, well, it will be like a nuclear explosion of love and spirit. And that will be the moment when both of your spiritual paths are going to complete. But of course, it will also be like stepping into a totally different dimension. That is when spirituality will no longer be a philosophy. It will no longer be the rituals you do every day. It will be just your love story. Basically, your heart, your united hearts when you meet each other, are just going to open up a portal for the universe to fill Everything that you do, touch, every, everywhere you go with the magic of love. That will be your new spiritual path just to love. Not just one another, but to do something with your love. As in when you're together, you can do anything. Like, for example, let's say someone seeks you out for your advice, like always. But this is where it's not just you giving the advice. It is that... Holy Union, the alchemical reactor of the two, you and this twin flame. So imagine the power, the precision, and also the power of manifestation. And if nothing ever really special happened in your life until this moment, and when I say special, I mean like your dream house, the jackpot, or witnessing or being part of a big miracle or the big, big things of spirituality, basically. Well, you didn't even need it, because when you unite, that is going to be something which happens every single day. Basically, before you were born, both of your souls agreed to enter into this life separately, each part to do the work, the learning, to clear karma, to... Learn everything that you need to learn both karmically as and studies, everyday life, me- methodology to know how to do this and that skills, talents about the world. And most importantly, make all the wrong choices, the mistakes, the downs in life, because those are the ones which teach you. And also, you had to do all of this before a massive world change, which is 2020, obviously. Two of Cups, Two of Wands, 2020. And after that world change, you definitely need to unite. So every path is going to lead you to this holy union because you need each other. And there is a very important logic in this because if you would have found each other before, or like some soulmates from early childhood, you wouldn't really have needed absolutely anything on the world. It would be like all doors would close instantly because that's the union, you're complete. Because you do have this very fulfilling effect on each other, so you would feel like absolutely nothing's missing from your life. You would feel... Perfectly in bliss every single moment, every single second. But that also means closing all doors to evolution, higher learning, adapting to the modern age, the age of Aquarius, and seeing all the bad things in the world. The pain, the suffering, the chaos, the selfishness, the greed. You know, all the bad things in life, you needed to see that. Because that is what you are going to help make better with your union. So that will be your common purpose. But unfortunately, these cards do not show or give any information about who this person is, how they look like, what they do, neither how you're going to meet or when you're going to meet. Either because this moment is extremely close, that eight of wands can represent that as well. 
maybe it happens this year so you don't even need to know anything but at the same time it can also mean you cannot really live without one another for much longer because exactly the big things that you have to do together cannot diverge so one way or another it's fated anyway it's already taken care of so all you really need to do is go with the flow well thank you so much for listening I do hope that you guys enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed channeling this reading. I wish everyone from the bottom of my heart that Venus, the celestial expression of love and beauty in the magical sign of Pisces, blesses us with good fortune and just simply shows the path for fated lovers to unite. May all your lives be filled with love, with happiness. And thank you once again for listening. Thank you for all the lovely comments, all the love, all the support, and of course the generosity. My work just couldn't exist without your donations. Until next time, bye for now.